Hi everyone, it's Gregory here, not only code. Today we are talking about programmers' health and health problems. If you've ever had issues with your wrists, if you've ever had issues with your back, that's absolutely normal and very common among programmers. While our profession does not make any list of the most risky professions in the world, we still have our issues and there are certain ways to deal with these problems. So if you've ever suffered from some problems that I mentioned, this episode is just for you. If you haven't had such problems, I still recommend watching it because it is very probable that such issues will happen at some point of your career. So it's better to prevent them than later have to deal with them and to minimize the effects of them. As always, if you enjoy my content, please click that like button, click that subscribe button. And without further introduction, let's start. If you spend a few hours a day sitting like this, or if you sit like that, in a few years, you might be looking like Quasimodo from Disney's cartoon. It is very common that people who have office jobs suffer from back pain, especially the lower back pain. Prolonged sitting position is problematic because of a few things. The biggest issue is how much pressure we are putting on our spine. And that, of course, changes with how we sit. So no matter whether you ever had a lower back pain or middle back or upper back pain, all of this can be helped by sitting in a proper position and by having a proper chair, proper desk, proper work environment. Let's start with a chair. Most of us who work in the office and who work from home use some kind of an office chair or some kind of gaming chair. These chairs are not all equal. Some of them are designed with a low price in mind. Some of them are designed with making a good impression in mind. Some of them, and these are the ones that you should be paying attention to, are designed with ergonomy in mind. So when you buy a new chair, and if you do not have a good ergonomic chair, then you should absolutely buy one. When you buy a new chair, there are a few things that you should pay attention to. The most important thing by far is that the chair should be adjustable. So what needs to be adjustable in chair? Obviously the height of the chair, this is absolute basic. And if your chair doesn't support adjusting height then probably you can't adjust anything. The second one that's not very obvious is the depth of the chair. So the seat needs to be adjustable back and front. And Perfectly, your knees should be bending a few centimeters after the end of the seat. The next setting is the lumbar support. The good chair has a support for our lower back and it needs to be adjustable because depending on our height, our lower back, the point where we need the support is changing. Of course, another thing is reclining. While most of us find one single position in our chair that we can sit comfortably and we do not change it very often, it is good to be able to recline from time to time and to lean back. Good chair has adjustable armrests and you can find a lot of chairs that have fixed armrests and they might seem comfortable, but being able to adjust a few dimensions helps a lot. So if you read the descriptions of ergonomic chairs, you can find things like armrest adjustable in 2D or 3D or 4D. What does it mean? Well, most of them are adjustable in the height. Some of them are adjustable in the width, which is quite important. If you are a short person, if you are a tiny person, then you can make them more narrow so that you do not have to sit like that in order to reach the armrest. And if you are bigger, then you can make them wider so that you do not sit like that. The third dimension can be either moving the armrest forward and backwards and the fourth dimension is, or sometimes the third dimension, is the angle. So the armrest can be rotated and that's very comfortable because if you have a short keyboard then you normally sit like this. So you want your armrest, you want your arms to lie on the armrest and if you can rotate them that helps a lot. Recently a lot of people especially those who work from home or who spend a lot of time playing games, buy so-called gaming or racing chairs, the fancy, flashy-looking chairs that look like taken out from the racing car. If you decide to buy such chair, 
please make sure to also choose the one that is ergonomic. A lot of them are designed with a nice look, they have flashy colors in mind, and the creators do not pay attention to ergonomics. It looks like a racing chair, right? Like you are sitting in a real racing car. So these chairs are designed with keeping the driver stable when they are taking sharp turns and to make sure that they can reach the gas pedals, the uh, brake pedals, etc, etc. While when sitting at home or in the office when playing games, you do not want to be in fixed position. You want to have more comfort so that you can move around. And then the design of these gaming chairs with these wings that are making the sitting area more narrow, it is actually not very good. It prevents you from being able to move to switch to a more comfortable position. Once you buy a chair, the next thing to buy is a desk. Desk does not matter as much because it's just a fixed thing in front of you, but you need to make sure that it is of a proper height, that you do not need to lean in too much, that you do not need to raise your arms like this to reach the desk. If your desk and a chair are too tall for you and you cannot adjust them well, maybe because you work in an office and the equipment's already there, you cannot choose your own, then make sure to check something like footrest that helps a lot with long sitting uh, if you are too short to reach the floor with your feet. And once you have all the equipment, make sure to pay attention to your posture because sitting like this makes your back suffer and you might not feel it now but you will feel it in a few years. The perfect position for a human is obviously standing position then the pressure that we put on our spine is not that high, it's not that strong. Uh, then the other good position if you need to see it, the good position is to recline a bit to the back uh, then a bit more pressure goes here, a bit less pressure goes on the lower back. The more uh, lean forward you are, the worse. So sitting straight is quite okay, sitting and leaning forward is worse, then worse and worse. Fixing your bad habits while sitting, while working, fixing bad posture can have a very good impact on your back. A couple years ago, I had quite a big problem with my lower back that it hurt me a lot, especially in the morning. Sometimes I needed a few minutes in the morning to get up from bed because of the pain, because I just couldn't move. Uh, I consulted a doctor and he told me basically that I need to fix the way I work, that I can't handle another 30 or so years as a programmer if I will be sitting in this unhealthy position all the time. Uh, so since then I fixed my working environment, I ensured that I have proper chair, that I have proper desk, that I get up and walk around. Whenever it's available I work at the standing desk, not the whole time but at least half an hour a day and that helps a lot. The last thing and the really important one is to make sure that you move outside of work. The worst that you can do after eight hours of sitting at work is to get your private laptop or console and to sit for another four or so hours in front of the TV or another screen. Get up, move your ass, go out, go to the park, go to a shop, just walk somewhere. And if you can, do some sports. This makes a huge difference. Problem number two, wrists, arms, hands, the things that we use to type on the keyboards all the time. Most of the problems that happen to programmers related to our arms are called RSI, repetitive strain injuries. And this is kind of an umbrella name for different things like a very common carpal tunnel syndrome, which means that there is a pressure on the nerve that goes through our arm and that goes here in the wrist for a carpal tunnel. And that pressure uh, causes a numbness in our four fingers, except for pinky, uh, that causes some weakness here. Uh, it makes it hard 
to keep typing on the keyboard. But there are also different problems like uh, related to elbow. There are things like tennis elbow or golf elbow. All these things are because of us keeping our arms constantly in the same position, keeping our hands in the same position and typing on the keyboard. So what can we do in order to fix these problems or to prevent these problems, which is preferable? First, again, uh, the habits. Uh, do not keep your arms in the same position all the time. Uh, make sure to have a chair with good armrest or if you can't, just make sure to keep a healthy position of your arms, of your hands. Of course, uh, equipment matters a lot. I am a fan of Apple equipment and I've been using the Apple Magic keyboard and I've been using the Apple Magic trackpad for years and they're wonderful devices and I enjoy using them but they cause me pain because of how I keep my hands, how I keep my arms. So the Apple keyboard uh, is very narrow so when I keep my when I want to type on it, the way I keep my hands is not like this, which would be natural, which would be straight for my wrists. No, when I keep my arms like this, my hands need to be in this position. And you can feel if you move your wrist, you can feel that if you hold it like this, it is harder here. You can see that it is strained, that this position is not relaxing. The same happens with most of keyboards in terms of uh, the vertical versus horizontal position. So the natural position of our arms is like that. It's not this way. So that's why most of the laptop keyboards, most of the general, most of the keyboards cause the problem because they force us to keep our hands like this all the time. There are some keyboards that solve these problems. There are some vertical keyboards that allow us to type like that but you don't want to try them. You can check them out. You can check some videos about them. I'm pretty sure that you don't want to try them. But there are keyboards that solve these problems at least partially. Uh, so I've used a couple of keyboards. I've used some uh, Matthias keyboard in the past. Now I use Ergodox keyboard that allow me to tilt them so that I do not keep my hands like this, but like that. It's not perfect because you know, it's still not the natural position. Uh, but it's still better than keeping them perfectly flat. And besides the keyboard, mouse is another piece of equipment that might force you to keep your palm constantly straight, to keep your hand constantly in this flat position. Uh, so there are again some mice that you can try. Uh, the Logitech MX Master Mouse is already better than the uh, usual, than the cheapest uh, mice because it gives you some small angle so that it's uh, a bit healthier. Uh, I use the Logitech vertical mouse, which has a quite unusual design, but it allows me to keep my hand like this. There is around 60 degrees angle there. Uh, I enjoy it, but it's quite, um, maybe not troublesome, but it takes a bit of time to get used to and definitely it's not the cheapest mouse. So there are many things that you can do about making sure that your wrists suffer less during the day. But besides equipment, the most important is to move them and to uh, move them from time to time, to spin them. Uh, again, go out, play some sports, move them from this uncomfortable, constantly same position. Uh, go for a walk, then at least our hands, our arms move a bit uh, and they can, they can relax in this more natural, straight position without being twisted the whole time. Just like with the lower back, I used to have problems with my wrists. A couple years ago, I had a numbing pain here and I didn't know what to do about it. So I took longer breaks from typing, but as a full-time programmer, I had to type a lot. And what really helped me back then was buying an ergonomic keyboard. Uh, the keyboard that I bought was uh, split. So instead of being this uh, narrow keyboard where I had to keep my uh, wrist like that, I had two separate halves. Uh, and this is also what I use right now in the Ergodox keyboard. So I moved the split outside and then my arms, I could just keep them straight and I, keep, I could keep my wrist straight without this unhealthy position here. 
Uh, so definitely consider doing that, especially if you already have some problems with your wrist. All right, that's it for today. If you suffer from some wrist problems, from some back problems, know that there are ways to minimize the effects of these issues. And if you don't have such issues yet, still take care of your body because it feels like you're always young and healthy, but it may change quite fast. And some of these problems are created over years. You might not feel the effects of them yet, but they might be there. And when you start feeling pain, it means that it's already quite late and that you have to start working soon to prevent these issues from happening again. In the next episode, I will be talking about three non-obvious skills that are not directly related to programming, but that helped me a lot to become a better programmer and to have a better career. If you enjoyed my videos, if you enjoyed this content, please make sure to click the like button, to click the subscribe button so that I can reach out to more people with my content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Stay tuned.